Yo, what up? It's your boy TW Solo. And today we're going to talk about using your dry rack for your studio. Now, here is my studio. And the reason why I want to make this video of using the dry rack for my studio is because since I'm going to do some recording and mastering in this room, which I have been always, I'm going to be able to tune to this room into a flatter uh, frequency when it comes to doing recording and mastering. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I got my uh, dry rack turned around. Here's the dry rack. Here's my studio equipment. And I noticed I can use my dry rack as a studio. I'm quite sure none of y'all never figured that out. But me, I just figure I can use it because since it's got auto paint noise to output the speakers that the microphone is capable of hooking it up so that these two speakers right there can uh, output itself with the paint noise within the dry rack into the microphone I'm going to soon hook up. So that way I can get a flutter re frequency tuned to this room right here that I'm going to be using in this room to do my recording and mastering. So the first thing I did is I turned this dry rack around. As you notice, here's the back. I don't know if you can see it that well, but that goes to my subs. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to leave this hooked up. But if I go over here, this is where I'm going to hook my studio monitors, uh, monitors up on the output for the mains. And here's the inputs where the mixer down here, right there, it's going to go to the input right here. And like I said, for the outputs, for the mains, it's going to go to that studio monitor and that studio monitor. That's all I need. I'm not using no subs. I'm not going to involve with that because it's going to, you know, I don't know. But I'm always sticking with two speakers when it comes to mixing and mastering. So, so here it goes. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, walk you through and see what happens. Okay, these comes from my studio monitors from the back of them. This one I'm using, I know this is awful, but I'm going to get some better XLR uh, cable for my studio monitors. But anyway, this is just a brief demonstration. So here's my right channel, and here's my left channel. And these come from these speakers right here. I turn them off. So I'm going to take these and hook it to the input of the dry rack at the back, which I'm going to be showing you right now. So I'm going to take this cable here. Take that. It's going to go right in here. Okay? So just take it. Push it in. You don't see it, but I'm sorry. Take the other side. Take this. That's going in there too, right there. So, let's turn it around. Push it in there. You don't see it, but yeah. So they both click. Now this one is coming from the mixer, and I'm using the sub channel for a reason, because this is just going to be my output. My mains is just going to be something I record from my microphone or any other output source that's going into the main that come out from these speakers here so for now since it's unhooked from the studio monitors now this now this output is feeding through the input of this dry rack right here as you can see this yellow cord right here right here is going in now for the output this is where my studio monitor is going to be hooked up at so give me a second all right now, this cable right here is coming from my left, and this cable over here is coming from my right. I got these both power off, so that way I won't, you know, damage it. So these two right here, my left, I'm going to take these two cables right here. It's going to go to the output right there that's available. For the sub-channel, I'm not going to use because I'm going to edit it so that way this won't be turned on. So they're going to go right here. So, once again... You take your left, it goes to left. I'm quite sure you know how to do it. You just plug it right here. If it do it. There we go. And then you take your right from the studio monitors. Push that around here. You take that and that's going right here. Right there. I know it's dark, but I'm sorry. Push it in. Hold on. Okay. So there you go. Bring the light up close, uh, close so you can see what's going on. Now that's the sub channel. Like I said, I'm not going to use. So over here is where my studio monitor goes on the output right there. Now the ones with the yellow one is coming from the mixer that's sending the output to the input of the dry rack. Now I'm all set up. So now I can go ahead and do the wizard. So, okay. Here we go. Now I got everything hooked up, so now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the dry rack on first. 
So power up. And it's going to do all that. But this time, I'm going to start off fresh. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to uh, hold down setup. Hold this button down. And it will take you to this wizard right here. Hit the next page button. And then it's going to ask you to input setting. It's going to be in stereo since I'm going to be using two uh, studio monitors. It's going to be in stereo. Hit the next page button. Then it's going to ask you uh, what kind of main speakers you got. But since I'm going to be using uh, Behringer, now you should notice that it's not listed on here. So what you would do is you're going to turn your data wheel. And you're going to keep turning until it says customize. Right here. Customize. Stereo. Make sure you don't get this wrong. Right here. Customize. Hit the next page button. Then it's going to ask you, are you using subs? Which is going to be none. So we're not using subs. So just go ahead and hit the next page button. And then it's going to show you the volume of the main speakers. Now, make sure if you do have studio monitors and they are powered, make sure that the volumes are both of them are centered straight up and make sure there's no EQ or nothing applied to them and make sure they are flat so that way you have a better uh, better pointing start or whatever that is so just make sure the volume is set up center make sure the EQ and everything is flat on there on both of them now if you got a studio monitor they are passive and you got an amplifier just make sure that your amplifier your bass and triple are sent to in the middle kind of like this if you have an amplifier make sure they set up to the middle and make sure the master volume is turned all the way down if you have if, if you have passive uh, studio monitors they don't have uh, amps built into it so anyway let's just go ahead so uh, the back of my studio monitors I had to set up straight up like I said hit the next page button and now I can make a new preset so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to name them Studio Monitors. I'm just going to put Studio Mons or maybe Behringer Mons or whatever. So uh, hit, the, hit the data wheel, press it in, and it's going to load it up. And now it's going to ask me to do the auto level and all that. So uh, hold on one second. All right, I got my RTA microphone here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and connect it and hook her up. And um, as you should know, of course, you would take the end of this right here, and you're going to plug it up in here. Make sure that you don't press this. Make sure that it's off before you connect it, so that way you won't mess things up. So go ahead and push it in. Sorry. There we go. So that's pushed in there. And then you would take the other end of it, and then you just hook your, uh, your microphone testing thing up on the other end. So you would take that. And just hook it on the back of it like so like this just give me a second all right so there it goes hooked up now you probably ask them why I got this clip on there that it can come off it don't need to be on there but I just leave it on so that way I don't lose it but anyway now it's connected as you can see so the next thing you would do you go in here and uh, it's going to ask you, you know, connect the microphone to RTA input, and then you press the RTA button, uh, input button, which is right here. If you can see where my fingers are at, press it in, and it will glow green. And then it's going to take you to this page, and this is where uh, you got to make sure you turn your studio monitors on, too. I'm sorry about that. So just uh, turn them on. There we go. They both on. Now, doing the paint noise, make sure you don't talk or say anything during the paint noise performance so that way your speakers can, uh, well, so your microphone can pick up the speaker's output and be able to tune it into this room that you're going to be using for mixing and mastering or whatever. So, um, so I'm in the auto level, microphone level, turn up level, and make sure you don't say anything. So, uh, here we go. Hold on for a second. We're going to turn it on and we can't say anything. So here we go. 
You take your microphone. Now, let me explain to you real quick. Now, I guess the rule of thumb is if you would have, a lot of people said if you're going to deal with studio monitors and you want to find a sweet spot, they will take a ruler. They will measure it from this side to this side over here. Once you find out how many inches between this speaker and that speaker where the scream is at, it's supposed to equal to you standing uh, to your listening position that's equal to the distance between that speaker and that speaker where the screen at. So if you were to measure left and right, let's just say if you measure, let's just say if it's 42 inches across. If it's 42 inches across between that speaker and that speaker, then it should be the 42 inch from that speaker's to you. And same thing for that side from that speaker's to you, 42 inches. You know, that's what they say. It's called a triangle type way. So, but anyway, let's just go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the pink noise on and I'm going to show you and then we'll, we'll start from there. So, uh, so like I said, if it was 42 going from this way and that way, 42 inches across, from each other then it should be another 42 inch going from there to either side to you from where you're standing at so you would have that microphone kind of like between the tweeter and woofer level I don't know I'm not that good at it but I'm just saying so you would have it right there doing the pink noise no talking until it's done so I'll show you on the next clip right now so here we go one thing I need to tell you guys is, uh, I don't know if you've seen my other videos, but anytime you would make a new preset, you're going to be going through some changes between left and right and subwoofer for left and right speaker when it comes to uh, auto leveling. So uh, this is going to take a little bit of time, but once I master this, then I'm going to show you the next step what to do. So right now it's telling me that the main speaker right needs to be increased, and the reason for that is... Uh, the microphone is really trying to balance between the speaker set in front of you. So uh, once I pass this up, I'm going to let you know the next step what to do. So it's going to take me some time to get this over. So once I get that, then I'm going to show you the next clip after I pass this one. So give me a second. Okay, before we get even, uh, even farther, uh, I noticed uh, uh, I brought my tape measurement. And like I said, I was measuring between this studio monitor and that studio monitor. And I was very close. It was actually 41 and a half inches across between these two. And then I took the ruler. Uh, then I also measured from this speaker to this microphone, which is 41 and a half inches between that and that. And between that and that over there, the speaker over there. So I divided. So in order for me to find a center of 41 inches and a half across, you would take... You would take 41 divided by 2, and here's your center. It's 20 and a half. That's where your microphone should be pointed at, at the at the middle, just to let you know that. So, like I said, let me go ahead and finish this part, and once I pass that part, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, you guys, look for me. I pretty much nailed it besides doing the measurement between these two speakers and these two speakers to the microphone for the equal distance. So lucky I nailed it because I thought it's going to be a pain in the ass to keep turning one of these speakers around and adjusting these levels, turn them back around and repaint noise. So I made it so far. It took me three tries. So this is where it will look like. Auto levels complete. Now you can release the button right here. Turn it off. And now it's going to look like this. Custom loaded and level balance. And now if you hit the next page button, you're going to be doing some auto EQing. So, you hit the next page button. Hit it again. And then it will actually connect the microphone, which is already connected. So, you turn it back on. And like I said, I wanted to tune to this room flat. When I'm doing making beats and doing some recording and mastering, I always want to start off my frequency flat so I can know what's going on with with my music in this room and uh, so you get like four different options here's flat here's A here's B and here's C and here's D but what I also didn't know is if you press in the data wheel you got you got this over here so the higher you set it up the more precise 
that you're going to get a, a frequency uh, response. It don't say it on the menu, so I couldn't find it on the menu. But if you set it low, it's not going to take that long. The pink noise to get this type of EQ that you want it. So it's not going to take that long. But if you set it on high, it's going to be more advantage of the EQ respond level that you selected. So I'm going to keep it high because I want the best of the best and more accurate. So I'm going to turn this back to zero which I want it flat tuned to the room I'm going to be recording and mastering so I got it flat I got it set on high and now when you hit the next page button you can't talk or say anything so here we go turn the level up and let it do its magic to the desired level that you're going to be recording and mixing And voila, now you complete the auto EQing. Now that you're going to have flat response coming out of these speakers that's tuned into this room where you're going to be doing your mixing and mastering in this room. And that's what I love about the dry rack. If I were to take my studio into someone else's houses, then I'm going to have to repaint noise coming out of these two speakers to get a flat respond so I can really know what's going on doing some mixing and maxing and making beats. I always start off flat so I can know where the bass and the mids or heights are going. If you start off with an EQ that's boosted to bass or boosted to triple, you're just going to throw your mixes off. It's all about starting flat, get to know your equipment, so that way if you were to do a temporary master and playing in the car or in the club or whatever you can get the idea of whether you have to boost the bass or take away the bass or whatever so that way you can be sure that you got everything right and also and there's another way of doing this if you can take a commercial cd that has rap and stuff in there or whatever type of music you'll be using which i'll be doing hip-hop and rap so if i were to take any hip-hop or rap commercial cds i can try to get the idea how i wanted it sound with my music and just do some comparison like right on here but that's just an example so now I got that out of the way now it's gonna tell you to release the RTA button turn it off and now it's gonna take you to the feedback mode which we don't need that I'm gonna bypass it I'm just gonna hit uh, preset now it says custom now I can uh, I can hit the store button right here just hit that and of course you have to use the data wheel so you can change the letterings and stuff like that so uh, I'm going to show you in a little bit what I'm going to call this okay so for now I'm just going to call the studio once I'm done with that you would uh you would press the store button and then it's going to ask you where do you want to store your new preset on the user mode so I don't want to overwrite this because this is for my DJ equipment so what I'm going to do I'm going to turn the data wheel to the right until I'm just going to overwrite this because I don't have that type of power speaker. So I'm going to overwrite that. I'm going to press the store button right here and then storing preset. So now, not only I can use this dry rack to DJ with, if I were to come here and in this room, all I have to do is switch a couple wires just from this mixer here like i said the output of this sub one or two is going into the input of the dry rack right here and then the mains are going to the left then right there's no subwoofer involved i don't use subwoofer when it comes to it this will not be used so that's not going to go on so now we're going to do a little music test out of the computer and i'm going to listen to it with a sound so i'm going to unhook this mic move it out the way i know it looks ghetto but that's the only way I can kind of center it, if you can see. Like I said, the, dis uh, the distance between two speakers, 41 and a half inches. From the speaker to speaker, then the speaker to the mic, and of course the other side, speaker to the mic. And I divided it by two, 
so I can know where my center is, where the microphones go, so it will be 20 and a half in the center of the screen. Now the height level, I really don't know. I had it between the tweeter and the woofer, so that's just that. You know, you, you get the idea once you do it. So let's do a little town, uh, sound test and uh, see what we got. All right, here we go and see what it sounds like doing frat frequencies to this room. Okay, uh, I noticed that it, it, it is different. It really sounds different. So what I did is, as I show you in this video, that I used the dry rack to make these frequency on these studio monitors flat tuned to this particular room only. Now, like I said, you can go somewhere else and have a studio going and use a dry rack to be able to do some flat frequencies doing mixing and mastering so that way you can really know where your music are at. So, um... As you notice, when I was messing with the data wheel and I was turning it uh, off and on, I can really hear the phrases and somewhat in the mid frequencies different from each other. I can really hear it. So it really makes me think that um, it's, it's really different. Now, these studio monitors, they came with the manual, the, the paper, and they already tuned to be flat coming out of these speakers. But when you're working in a room, which I, I need to get some, uh, I need to get some uh, foam to put in, in these walls, you know, maybe a couple on this ceiling, this side of the wall, that wall, over here around the windows, and get a couple foam to put in it, so that way the sound won't reflect from each other in this room. But that's going to be in the future uh, video. But what I'm saying is when i was making it flat like i can really hear what's going on between these two speakers going across from each other in the listening position where the microphone was at which i'm going to be sitting at at you know anywhere from 41 inches and a half and not out because then what they're saying is you're going to miss your sweet spot i don't know if that's true but you, like i said you just got to know your equipment in order to know what you got going on so so yeah, uh, now that you know, you can make your uh, now you know that you can use a dry rack for studio uses as well. So you you're not just DJing with it; you can also use it for studio use and make the frequency flat in any particular room that you are using. So that way you have a better mixing start when it comes to flat frequency. So you know what your bass is at, you know what your mids are at, and then you know what your triples are at. So. There you go. For the studio monitors and the racks itself, this is how you set up your studio equipment along with the dry rack. So, you know what to do. Leave a comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Agree, disagree. It doesn't matter. Let me know. We all learn from each other. So, just let me know what's up. Now that you know how to use a dry rack in studio situation. Talk to you later.